Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Real Estate Talk TGIF. This is episode number 275, and we are real excited to have uh, a friend, uh, a local friend, um, David Radney, who is who is really, I mean, uh, as far as scripts and dialogues, one of my inspirations, I mean, I've We've 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 done a little bit together. I've, I've been on his his uh, his morning mindset call every now and then, and just 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 love this guy the way his persistence and determination is. Dave, thanks for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for the conversation. Absolutely, man. I'm really looking forward to this. This uh, uh, broadcast is brought to you by uh, NJHeroesProgram.com, a uh, a program which helps our veterans and our heroes police, fire, teachers, all different things. So you'll see that scroll. If you see that, please check it out, what's going on. We'll also brought to you by, by Real Estate Skill Builder and the Modern Agent Team. Uh, we'll talk about that too, maybe a little bit. Maybe you'll see something scrolling. But anyway, let's go to the videotape and get started. Let's go. Real estate agents, are you looking to acquire clients consistently to grow your business and income for a great lifestyle? Well, this is Dave Finale, and I'm here to bring you the Real Estate Skill Builder broadcast, Real Estate Talk TGIF. Brought to you by Real Estate Skill Builder and the Modern Agent Team. And here we are. Welcome, everybody. Again, Real Estate Talk, TGIF, episode 275, uh, in part brought to you by Real Estate Skill Builder, my coaching company, and Modern Agents Group here in Teaneck, where we have the Modern Agent Experience every Wednesday to help agents and to stand next to them as they're making their calls, literally stand next to them and help them with their calls. And that's what we do every Wednesday. So I want to thank David Radney for coming on. You know, we talk, Dave, we talk about scripts and dialogues and prospecting almost every week. And I hope people don't think that I'm a broken record when I keep talking about it, but I'm going to tell you something. It is the lifeblood aside from your sphere of influence, which you're going to make calls to. Yes. It is, it is what we have to do is that we have to generate leads. So Dave, as we get started in this business, in this, in this conversation, in this broadcast, talk to me about your path from from you, you, you left, you left Dallas in 2012, moved to New Jersey, and here you are as one of the top line coaches in the country, and uh, you help a lot of people. Talk to me about your your path and your journey and how you got started. You know, with um, to your to your your greatness of being a coach and a mentor. Absolutely. However, before I jump into that, I just want to say, tell you, do not worry about being a broken record. My other title is CRO chief reminding officer we have to continue to say the same thing over and over again and when the people are ready for the message they'll hear it so keep doing you because that's what people need to hear thank you just brother. so you know awesome brother and yeah. so um i appreciate the question so i moved from dallas to new jersey in 2012 i didn't have a sphere of influence here so you know in order for me to make money i had to get on the phone and actually you know use my scripts and learn how to prospect and so I started doing classes, you know, during that process of me learning New Jersey, I started doing classes in my market center on Friday mornings so that I could practice my scripts and really hone my skills. And it started off really small, one or two people, and it grew to 25 people coming every Friday morning. So as I'm growing my business and people are watching me get for sale by owner listings and expired listings and have success, more people started coming to the coaching classes and learning how to get better at scripts themselves. And so what I realized, Dave, is what I love about real estate is there are so many different ways you can go with this business. And I found that I got more from helping other people learn how to get listings right. than I did from getting the listings myself. Yeah. And so I, I came to a point in about 2018 where I said, you know what? Lean into your purpose. You're, you're here for a greater reason than just getting listings. You're having an impact on people. You're changing people's lives. And like Z Zig Ziglar always says, if you help enough people get what they want, you're always going to get what you want. So I decided to start a coaching program to help agents learn how to get out there and take listings at a high level. Yeah. So it, it all starts with what you say. And I think more so of how you say it. Right. Um, but there's a lot of different things involved with it, David. I mean, you know, I, I, I am a, I will admit that I have call reluctance like the majority of the real estate professionals out there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one thing to get through it. And, you know, a lot of people say it starts with mindset or it starts with motivation. It starts with discipline. 
And, you know, the other thing is that people are say that they're depressed about the market. I think that's that's a bullshit excuse that you got to get through. Yeah. Talk to me about the different the different parameters in here that we talk about and the things we worry about. And the thing that, first of all, what gets in our way of the prospecting and what we have to do? We get in our way. <laughs> Hell yeah. Way all the time, because like you said, the excuses, there is a saying you can have reasons, you can have results and you can't have both. And most people are, are sitting around waiting to get motivated, waiting to get inspired. However, it really comes down to discipline and discipline basically means doing what you need to do, even when you don't feel like doing it. Right. And then being super consistent and doing it every single time. But Dave, if I'm being direct with you, just from all the agents I talk to, they, they let fear keep them on the sidelines and keep them from doing the activities they need to do every day. And I, I've been telling people lately, you got to learn how to get comfortable being uncomfortable. I mean, even for me, just to be direct, being on this podcast, speaking in front of groups, I'm always a little uncomfortable, but I've gotten comfortable being uncomfortable, which allows me to do the work. And I think if more agents got comfortable being uncomfortable, they would stop making excuses and actually get on the phone and do the work. I, I think that I think the the hard part of being uncomfortably comfortable or comfortable being uncomfortable is a little bit of having to do with confidence, a little bit of arrogance as well. And what I mean by that is that I remember, you know, uh, the first time I really spoke in front of anybody, it was actually a zoning board mm. shit back in the 80s, right? And I was nervous as hell. I knew what I was going to talk about, but I fumbled. And then, and then the next time I made a script for what I was going to say. And then I realized, you know what? I don't need a script. I am much better talking on my feet with a couple of notes. So that's what I had transitioned from doing. And, 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 and when I was finally getting on stage, the one thing that I had to do, this was my own, my own trick, was walking around, mm -hmm. right? Standing up and walking around. Now, I tell every agent that comes into our experience on Wednesdays to, you know, we stand up. So I have the rise desk. Everybody stands at a desk. Yep. You stand up. And I tell people it's because your energy is flowing. If you need to walk around, there's plenty of space here to walk around. That's right. And that is one thing that helps you get rid of the jitters, the fear, and it makes you a little bit more comfortable. Would you agree with all that? I completely agree with you. And I think everybody who's lead genning definitely needs to stand up. It does bring your energy up. For me, it was always having some background music that motivated me. And then I always wore a hat. I always wore a New York Yankees hat every time I got on the phone. Because for me, that NY, I had a mirror right in front of me so I could make sure I was smiling when I made my calls. That NY on that New York Yankee hat stood for not yet. So every time I got rejected and someone told me no, mentally I was saying, it's just a not yet. Keep calling, keep doing the calls. They're not telling you no, they're telling you not yet. It's your job to continue to follow up until you can flip them where they want to actually work with you. So yeah, I agree with you. I, I love that because it re always reminds me of my friend, and he is my friend, uh, Haas Pratt. I don't know if you know Haas. Um, yeah, listen, Haas Pratt came to my market center in Dallas. He he is the one that I credit with making me say, okay, I got to give these, these fizzbos and expires an opportunity. And I used to listen to his calls over and over again and his approach. So, yes, I know Haas Pratt. <laughs> sure. Haas, Pratt, Haas Pratt, great, great man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he, and honestly, I mean, his, his history, he did nothing his first six months. Then he met a guy by the name of Michael Reese. We and anybody, anybody in his business, you know, know who Michael is, right? Yeah. So he went from doing nothing in six months to taking almost a listing a day after that. And one of the things that he tricked, he said, you had the Yankee hat. It said, not yet with the mirror, right? Yeah. Well, Haas takes a, a golf glove and wears a golf glove when he makes calls. It's just his different persona. And then to take steps, um, and the next step, take it the next step. When he's on stage, he'll actually tell you he takes his hand and 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 signifies the unzipping of his body, takes his outside off, and he's now Boss Haas. Oh, so, you know, so it's really really cool. If you're interested in anything about anybody watching is interested in Haas Pratt, what he's all about. The Listing Boss uh, is his book. It's a great book, um, and it's it, it's amazing. But anyway, so to, so the persona or having something else to concentrate on yes to give you a move give you a mood excuse me give yes. you a mood to help you move along um motivates and can help you but is it motivation or is it discipline it's discipline 
it's discipline. That's just what it boils down to. And, you know, what I what I do for myself personally and professionally to help me with discipline is that when I write something in my calendar and I time block an activity, I do it with honor, which means I put it in there and I'm showing up for myself no matter how I feel. Dave, there was like two weeks ago, I woke up in the morning to go to the gym at 545. And I promise you, I looked at my phone and my finger was hovering over the snooze. And I had a conversation with myself and I said, Dave, you made this commitment. You made it with honor. You don't feel like going to work out right now. Go do it. Because if you don't go today, it's going to be easier not to go tomorrow. <laughs> I went to the gym. It wasn't the best workout ever. But afterwards, I, I pat myself on the back because I, I didn't disappoint myself. I showed up for myself and I put the work in. <laughs> uh, you know what, man? I, I, I feel you right there because that's every day for me. Yeah. My, my time frame is five. Is I get up at 415 to get to the gym by five. Mm. And for me, it's like I, I just used today. You know, I was tired. I was I slept well. I, I sleep well about 50 percent of the time. That's probably the same for most people out there in our business. And you know what? I was feeling I was feeling I was feeling tired, but I was also feeling good. I said, OK. You know what? I got to beat that alarm. So I always try to beat the alarm. And yeah. I did. And when I'm on my way to the gym, which is only 10 minutes away, it's no, man, you just you cannot just show up. You've got to put in the effort as much as you don't want to. Yeah. That's discipline. You talked about calendaring, calendar and time block, right? Yes. It's there. You didn't do it as an exercise just to do it and to build a calendar. My opinion, most agents the first thing they need to do aside from get onboarded to whatever, whatever company or whatever they're doing, right. is they need to get calendared. Yes. And I use that expression because once you get calendared, I don't believe in time management because time is something we can't control. So mm -hmm. we can't manage it. However, we can make choices as to what we're going to do, when we're going to do it and how we're going to do it. Right. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit more about how you've calendared yourself and how you bring that forth to the agents you work with. So what I talk about, I don't know if you've heard me talk about this concept called the 137. It was introduced yep. to me on a, a morning call that I'm on with James Shaw. And it's one day off a week, three day weekend, once a month and seven days off a quarter. So when I talk to agents about creating their calendar for work, the first thing I tell them to do is put in their 137, their time off, their vacations, all the things that they're doing for their family, all that goes on first. And then comes the real estate conferences and all the things you plan to go to for training and to, to grow yourself mentally for work. And then after that is putting in the activities for work. And it's right. so important. And I tell them this all the time that you time block the individual activities. And yes, you can't control time, but there's this concept. If you have to erase it, you have to replace it. So if your lead gen's in the morning and you have to go to a closing in the morning, I get it. But that doesn't mean no lead gen today. That means you have to replace it somewhere else in your schedule. And so I live by that and I color code my calendar that every activity I do, I do that's an income producing activity, it's in green. And so it's an yeah. easy way for me to check myself and make sure I'm doing enough green activities to make the goals I want to hit for the year. Right. So, so what we do with our calendar here at the Modern Agent Experience, one of the things that we do is we've got I give a calendar out as an example. Morning yeah. is green, afternoon is red. Because whatever you're doing in the afternoon is probably going to cost you money. I don't care if it's showing house. I don't care what it's still costing you money until you go to a closing. Yes. So it's still costing you money. The one of the other things that, 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 that I've been able to implement for myself first was a replacement block, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and a replacement block is really simple. I schedule time every day, at least a 30 minute block for if I miss something in the morning or I miss something sometime that I've got to get done that I discipline myself to do and I get interrupted and I don't do the right thing, I've got time already set up in my calendar to use that time. It's a makeup block. Love and it. you know what? And if you don't have anything else to do, well, maybe you prospect more. Maybe you just take a walk around the block or maybe you just like do nothing. But it's there so that we can, because let's face it, as much as I tell agents, here are the rules, no research, do not pick up the phone when you're dialing, do not talk to anybody. It doesn't matter if it's a buyer or who it is or an attorney. Don't do it. But we know they're going to do it. Yes. So I want you to log that time and make that time up later. Because this way I've given you the opportunity to make up the time. I love How's it. How's that sound? It sounds fantastic. And I have never done that before. 
after hearing you say that, I can see the the importance of having that block of time in your calendar each day. And I'm going to implement that. Thank you. No, you're welcome. I, it's, it's just, I mean, look, you know what? I mean, we've got enough distractions. There's so much freaking noise out there. You know, um, I don't know about you, but I, I block my time for checking out social media. I block my content creation, you know, um, and, and the great part about my days is that even though I'm up really early, I can always, you know, quit early. And I always give myself a reward for getting that appointment, for getting that qualified appointment. You know what I mean? And I think that's really important. Uh, let me speak on that. I believe we need to celebrate all the wins because real estate is such a hard business. And so you're right. When you get the appointment, you celebrate. They sign the paperwork, you celebrate. You go under contract, you celebrate. You have a, a closing, you celebrate. Now, let me just preference this. When I say celebrate, I don't mean go to Ruth Chris and get a $200 steak dinner. <laughs> Celebration could be throwing your favorite song and dance. It could be just going and having a glass of wine at your favorite restaurant and reading a book for half an yes. hour. But you yes. need to take time and say, I did the thing and I'm proud of myself. And I love the way this made me feel, and I'm going to go do more of this. Right, it's important. And that's and that's a part of. I mean, that's a part of something to look forward to. But also, you know, I want to I want to get in. We're talking about all this all this stuff and time and stuff. And I want to also put in, um, you know, it's 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 so very important to understand that we're going to have a lot of no's. Right, we're going to have a lot of no's, and I think it's okay to celebrate them. But let's get excited about what we're actually trying to do on the call. Most people will say, well, I am I have to get the appointment, so I'll do whatever it takes to get the appointment. I'm going to put a condition to that. Okay. I believe you should do whatever it takes to get the appointment if, you sh if you're actually helping the other person rather than telling them what to do. I agree. I so you know? agree with that. I, I believe when you're making the call. So what I do, and I don't know if everyone agrees with this, but I take off my sales hat and I put on my consultation hat. And so... The sellers, they have a problem they're trying to solve. Our job is to be a problem solver. In order to do that, we got to take some time and have a conversation and dig into their motivation to figure out what they have going on. And so what I do is I, I speak to them. I understand motivation. I dig two, three, four or five layers deep. And then I show them how I can help solve that problem. That's what needs to happen. And so many times we get on the phone and we're so salesy in the beginning we're not even taking the time to find out, is this truly a motivated and coachable person? Do they really have an issue I can help with? We're wasting a lot of time meeting with people who don't really need our service. I like to find out what they, what problems they have so I can be that problem solver for them. Is there a difficulty, David, being that problem solver? Is there a difficulty with agents trying to be that problem solver before they think about A, relationship, and B, which you just, you just use a really important word here, coach? Because you actually are, you actually want to coach them through it, but there's a number of things you need to do to get there. Is there, is there, uh, is there a, a, a difference between all that? Well, so here, here's what I will say. You know, yes, there, there's a difference here, but most people approach this. They approach the call and they have commission breath is the word that I use. Have yep, you, I do too. Yep. It's just you're breathing all this hot air and you're making it about you and you're making it about your company and how great you are. And no one cares no one cares. They want to know that you care about them first. So I would think that's the biggest issue. And the other issue that I found is that our income as real estate agents is in direct proportion with our ability to ask powerful questions and to have difficult conversations. And a lot of times people skirt around the topic that needs to be brought up and needs to be discussed. And if you're just willing to be direct and talk to people coming from contribution, They'll tell you everything you need to know in order to get the listing and help them move on to their next opportunity. Is today's market, and now we're this broadcast is being uh, done on September 15th, 2023. Inventory mm -hmm. is low, probably, you know, much different market than anyone's ever seen. I've seen a lot of them. I think it's even worse than 2008, but that's beside the point. Yeah. Is there a difference in what we're saying and how we're saying it today than 10 years ago? Yeah, there's and there definitely should be a difference in what we're saying, you know, now versus 10 years ago. It is a different market and there is lower inventory. However, I mean, Dave, you know this. I, I've been in real estate for 20 years. During up and down markets, people still have to buy and people still have to sell. I think what we're seeing is a lot of agents calling people and they're like, well, I'm not selling because I don't know where I'm going. 
and they're like, well, I can't find anybody who wants to list their home. You're not digging deep enough to find the motivated people. There you go. And the conversation needs to be those people who can hold off and wait. Those people should go on your database and you should drip on them. You should stay in touch with them. You're really looking for the people who are, I got to move. And if I can't find the place and I'm just going to have to rent a place, right? Or I'm going to have to move in with a relative. We need to find the motivated and we need to spend the time digging into that motivation. So I would say the conversation that's different is that we got to spend some time truly understand why this move is important to them, what it's going to do for them, how it's going to make them feel once they're actually there. We got to spend more time around that. So here, here's another thing. As you say that, I'm thinking about what I'm hearing in my group sessions and all my sessions is, um, but I, you know, I had a list of how many for sale by owners, let's say, and uh, I went through the whole list um, and the ones I talked to aren't interested. What do I do? Yeah. So for me, if they say they're not interested, interested in listing or interested in selling right now, and they're holding off on selling. Interested in selling right now, they got to hold off. Yeah. yeah, there's a for sale by owner, but they're going to hold off. You know, I would say to that for sale by owner, listen, if holding off is an option for you and you can wait for the market to turn, I, I get it. But let me ask you this. If you were able to sell this home right now and get, get them out for it, why are you moving? Again, I'm going to the motivation. Right. People can easily say they'll hold off. However, we can't motivate anybody. We can't make them want to sell their house but we can motivate them by asking questions and really understanding why they actually are looking to move in the first place. As a quick example, I talked to someone who told me they were going to hold off and wait. And when I started digging, the reason they were moving is their daughter was expecting their first grandbaby and they're retired and they wanted to move and help their daughter take care of the grandbaby and have a relationship with their grandbaby and their daughter because when their daughter was growing up, they were constantly working and they weren't at home. And for them, it was super important to be there and support their daughter. So once we got through the conversation, yes, they knew they might leave a little money on the table, but the time that they were going to get with their granddaughter and building that relationship was more important than making a couple extra thousand dollars on the sale of their home. So you got to dig deep enough to really understand what's important to them to help motivate them into making a decision if it's the right thing for them. Yeah, I want to get I want to digging deep and 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 asking the right asking any questions to get to the other questions. Yes. Number one, I want to bring up the point is like like the questions we're asking is just like a coach on a first call. It's called a discovery call, and the reason it's called a discovery call is because as a coach, I want to know exactly what your pains are and are you running away from them or you want to run toward the lack of pain or the pleasure, right? Um, and it's the same thing with a for sale by owner or whoever you're calling on the other line that, that has a need. It's discovering what their motive is. So yes. you're asking questions and, um, and that's really it. I mean, but the, one of the issues that I see all the time and what we hear too from the people we're calling is that most agents sound the same. How do we change that? What's the difference in the successful agent that doesn't sound like every other agent? Simple answer. It's learning how to internalize the script. When you internalize it, you and I, Dave, we could be reading the same script. It's going to come off different from you than it would for me because I've internalized it. I've made it my own. I have certain ways that I talk certain words that I use, it's always going to come across differently. However, most agents aren't taking the time to write the script out every day or listen to it every day and internalize it to the point that they can't get it wrong. And when you are at that point where you can't get it wrong, you're able to personalize it. And then it sounds different. So that's what, that's the work they need to put into it. So, so let me ask you this. Um, is there, is there, what's the best script that we, we should be using? I mean, is there, is there, is it the for sale by owner script? Is it a prequel script? Is it a listing presentation? What's, what's the first thing we should learn? I mean, listen, they're all great scripts. The first thing in my mind, in the order of what you just said, you want the physical script. Well, if I can back up a little bit, because yeah. in, my push, in my push training program, I flip my coaching completely on this head because instead of teaching for sale by owners and expires person how to prospect, I taught people how to pre-qualify and then how to go through a full listing presentation. Here's what that does. It gave people the confidence to get on the phone because they knew if they got the yes, 
they would know how to pre-qualify it and then how to go and present and get the business. So although it may sound a little backwards, I actually believe that needs to be taught first because what keeps a lot of people from making calls or from closing enough times to get the opportunity is that they're not afraid of the rejection. They're actually afraid someone's going to say yes, and then they're not prepared to handle a listing presentation. So in my broker's days, and owning my own brokers, one of the things I would always say is I want you to go out and I want you to get, I want you to get appointments. And the, the scariest thing in the world for you is going to be when they say, yes, come and talk to me. Yep. Right. And yep. what we've done now, what, and, and I agree with you hundred percent. This is what I try to push people to do is understand their listing presentation, because when you don't, and you start saying things on the phone, you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. You know, you, you, and I love the people that try to convince on the phone, not sell, convince. convince. I'm going to do a great job for you. And I, this, and I, that nobody gives a shit what you say you can do. That's because right. it does not address what they're what they're trying to do. Look, let's face it. There's two things, in my opinion, that 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 for sale by owners are trying to do. They want to either save commission or they've got a huge ego or an ego and they're do it yourselfer. Yeah. I'm a do it yourselfer. I like to do a lot of shit for myself around the house because it's my ego. I love saying I did that. I did yeah. that. Hey, I sold my house on my own. So in order to get through that, we've got to be able to ask the right to right questions and talk about what's really going to affect them the most, which could be money, which yeah. could be time, right? Talk to me a little bit about that. So for someone like you, Dave, who's a do it yourself or like I am, I would say, Dave, man, I, I honestly believe that you can sell this house on your own. The, the question that I have for you is, is that what's most important or is it what you put in your pocket at closing, which is the most important? And they will always say like 99% of the time is what I make what I sell the home for, that's what's important to me. And so then I know what to talk about. You know, if you were 100% certain that by working with me, you would make more money, we should at least have a conversation about that, shouldn't we? And I tie it down and I'm nodding my head, shouldn't we? And they say, well, I'd be open to hearing more about that. And that gives me a door to open to go in and show what I can do. Exactly. So, and we've, we've talked about this prospecting thing about asking questions and just simply put everybody, listen to this, really simple. If you're if you're saying I statements, you're talking about things that they should do or you're nobody wants to be told that they're wrong. Number one. So let's not stop doing that. Number two, if you're making statements, it's all about you. If you're asking questions, it's all about them. Yes. So we want everything to be questions. So let's hit the most important thing that a lot of people want to hear today in September of 23. Oh. What do they do differently in today's market? I mean, you know, there's there's we, we know that we're going to have a, a lot of inventory on luxury rentals because they're all over the country. Okay. And I feel there's going to be a glut of them in about another six to 12 months. Okay. But we don't have that anymore. We don't have that problem. The problem is single family, residential. What are we saying differently today because of our lack of people that a, they don't, they want to sell or have to sell. B, they won't sell because they've got a 3% interest rate. And C, they can't find what they're looking for. What, what's yeah. different today? What do we do differently today, Dave? So have you heard the saying that people are saying all the time, um, you know, uh, marry the house, date the rate? Have, yeah, I'm not, a fan. I, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I mean, it, 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 it can work depending on who you're talking to. But again, for me, it speaks to motivation. If I'm talking to someone and they're saying, hey, I got this house and it's at 3%. If I sell this house and I go buy something else at 7%, why would I ever do that? Why would I leave a 3%? Again, I would tell you that speaks to motivation. And so if they're not highly motivated, you may not be able to ever convince them to actually sell that house. So I think what we need to be saying different, I think our conversation needs to really slow down the process and spend some time talking about why they put the house on the market in the first place, why they were even thinking about selling in the first place. We have to be comfortable slowing down the sales process and spending time not trying to convince people, but connecting with people to understand what's important to them. Because if it's important enough, whether it's 3% interest or 7% interest, they're going to make the move. A lot of times we just don't have enough information to push those pain or pleasure buttons because we're skipping through the strip so quickly. So I would say what we should be doing different in this market is spending more time connecting and understanding why these people are contemplating selling their house in the first place. Okay. So I want to be a little contra to that 
And the okay. reason is, the reason is, I, I agree with you. I'm not going to say that you're wrong. I, I know you're completely right. But here's the thing. Isn't this what we should be doing anyway from 10 years ago? Well, is getting well, in, right? I agree. People just weren't doing it. And the market we just came out of, you didn't have to. You could get any, anybody's house and sell it so, and sell it quickly and for top dollar. You know, so that's why it's that that's where I believe that we're similar to 2005, 2008, because people became order takers. Right? Yes. And when you got into this business over the last three or four years, you were easy. I mean, you had people that were doing like three or four deals a year and then COVID hit and everything. All of a sudden they're doing 13, 14, 20. Oh, I'm doing great. I don't need any help. All of a sudden the interest rate goes up. They're back to doing what they're doing. Yeah. I commend the people that have held steady. If they were doing 20 and they're doing 20 now, their business is better. Yes, I agree. If, if they were doing 15 and they're doing 15, their business is still better. I don't care I, what they say. I right? agree. So so we've we've got to get into we've got to get into like really doing this 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 digging deep and going deep rather than wide with with what we're saying. And is it still a numbers game, Dave? It's a numbers game. Here's what I noticed. The numbers are double or triple like the right. number of calls and contacts you have to have to get the same results you were getting over the last two to four years have doubled and tripled. So now it really becomes understanding this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And you got to sit down to be really focused, which leads us back to our initial conversation around discipline. You've got to be disciplined. And here's the key. You got to get comfortable with the boredom of focus, that boredom of every day at nine, I'm at my desk and I'm making my calls until 12 no matter what you got to get comfortable with the boredom of focus because it's more of a numbers game. You got to talk to way more people to find the same opportunities you were finding in the last four years. So I want to, I want to take that same statement and but buddy of mine, friend of mine out in California on a team last year, did a hundred million dollars himself on a team. Right. And he calls it repetitious boredom where and it's, it has to do with your calendar with everything that we've talked about. Right. On your calendar, it's the same thing every day. I know, and we talked about being calendared as well, right? I know what I'm doing three Tuesdays from now at 10 o'clock. I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. right? No one, if you tell me what I'm doing next Friday at 11 a.m., I'm right here, yeah. right? I know, well, I'll be at a conference in for a few days of the week, but that's beside the point, right? But I know what I'm doing. And to, 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 be disciplined and to do what you have to do on a regular basis is the most important thing. So I, I want to transition a little bit into, we're talking about prospecting. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about new agents because the new agent count has not slowed down. Um, what's the best thing? What's the best thing for a new agent to do? Because I'm sure they're going to watch this and try to understand what we're talking about when it comes to prospecting. What's the best thing for a new agent to do? So a couple of things, first and foremost, understanding that it's not about selling real estate. It's about following a schedule. So you need to have a schedule. You need to be calendar. All your activities need to be time blocked. And the newer agent needs to understand they have two jobs. The morning is for, you know, working on your mindset, practicing your scripts and doing your lead gen and your follow up. And your afternoons are for going on appointments, going on previews, negotiating offers. That's what the afternoons are for. So really understanding that you have two jobs really understanding you run a business and you need yep. to show up and be in your business every yep. day. You just left corporate America working 40, 50 hours a week. You get into real estate and you think you can go to work for two hours and make the money you want to make. It doesn't work that way. No. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the hours. You have to practice what to say and how to say it. You sweat and practice so you don't bleed in war. And you've got to surround yourself with people who are positive, that are going to motivate you and push you. And not all the garbage magnets that just continue to talk about how bad the market is because that's going to affect you in the wrong way. That's exactly. What you do. Exactly. And and look, you know what? One of the things that I we, we talk about being calendared and the, the and just alongside with that mm -hmm. is working with people you know. Now, you yourself at the beginning of this broadcast, you came in, you came here from Dallas, didn't have a sphere of influence, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I keep I, I say to agents, and I sent out uh, some emails over the past couple of weeks, and I said. Tell me how many people are in your sphere of influence. Mm. And I say, if you hesitate or say about, you don't have one. Right. Right. You should know how many people are on it and how many people you talked to yesterday. 
How important is that sphere and how important was it for you as you built it up? So what here, if I, I'm going to be honest with you, I would have preferred to call expires and fizzbos versus calling the people that I knew. I just had this issue about calling people I knew and asking for business. Great. Biggest mistake in my in my career, because I lost so much money. I left so much money on the table by not calling the people I knew. And when I really got around to it and realized I need to call my database, people were like, oh, we just bought a house last year. And people were saying, well, we didn't hear from you. We thought you were so busy. We see you doing so many other things. We didn't think you had time for us. And so I will tell you, it's the most important thing. The people you know, you should be reaching out to them at least four times a year. You should be asking, who do you know? People want to help people that they know. And we're doing ourselves a disservice and them a disservice by not calling. It's it's the the first people you should be calling is your database. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite stat, which is true all the time, is 15% of the people you know are moving in the next 12 months. 100% of the people you know know someone who's moving in the next 12 months, right? And it's 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 just so, so very important. And I, I think you know, one of the things that we have to say is well, new agents uh getting started there is really, really important. You know, one of the things that you have, I, I, I um, alluded to it a little bit in the in the intro of the broadcast, yeah. is your morning mindset call. That's sure. the thing you do. Talk to me about when it is, how it works, and 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 what your what your goal is on that. So my 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 goal for the morning mindset call is for you guys to start your day off with energy, focused on your mindset. So the way I look at myself, my purpose is to be the coach and mentor I needed when I started out. I didn't have anyone who was helping me focus on doing the right activities and helping me focus on my, my mindset. So every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 840 Eastern time, I have my morning mindset call and we start the call off and we share gratitude and then we have a lesson. And then we actually say an affirmation like I'm a listing machine or I want it more than I fear it. And we get excited about the day and the opportunities and then we get to work. Um, I'd love to invite you guys to actually join the call. If you go to my, my Instagram is right here on the page, David Radley push. If you go there right in my bio, you can register for the call. It's a free call in the market like this is really important who you surround yourself with. You want to surround yourself with people who are doing the work, putting in the practice, working on positivity, affirmations and gratitude, because your mindset is the most important thing to get you through a market like this. So the morning mindset call is where you should be. And I'd love to have you. Yeah. And I, and, and I want to, I want to add something to that is there's a lot of people that will say, you know, I have a location uh, in Teaneck. It's a workspace that we work out of. And I say, come in and let's do the calls together. So I'll stand right next to you and do it. And people say, well, you know what, I'm going to do it at home today, or, you know, I'm good. I'm doing it at home. Well, I want to say something. If you go to this morning mindset call, it's going to at least give you the, the 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 more of the motivation and to be more disciplined in order to get it. I have I have been on it. I have I've listened to it, um, and uh, it it is definitely a help. Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can do, David. If if, if I want to hit you with, you've got an agent that used to do well and didn't. It is not doing well now. Yeah. What would you instruct them to do today? So a couple of things I would instruct them to sit down and figure out why are they even here? Like, what's their big why? Because logic makes people think emotion makes people act. Logically, that agent already knows what they need to do every day. They've had success before. They already know what they need to do. They need to get fired up and get excited and remember why they even started in the first place. And once they're excited about their big why and what they're moving towards and what their goals are, I'm going to instruct them to focus on their schedule and put in the 20% activities that are going to cause them to move the needle every day. And that's pretty simple stuff. It's knowing the market, calling your database, having a couple of other areas that you call like for sell by owners and expireds, and then doing constant follow up every day, constantly be moving the needle and putting yourself in front of people that are looking to sell their home and asking for the business, being direct and asking for the opportunity. So it's really about following the schedule and being disciplined around doing that 20% that we all should be doing every day. That is absolutely 100% the most important thing. Um, you know, we've got, I want to thank the people that have come on today and, you know, you know, we, I, I appreciate the two great coaches from Ariane and Giselle and Carl Pease, who is, who is a regular on our broadcast, leaving us messages and stuff. Um, David, I want to, I got two things for you What's and, up? and, 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 you know, Today's been a very good session. It's been it's been really 
concise and really good with talking about the different reasons and, and why fours of what we're doing with prospecting. Um, how do I help you grow your business? Well, you're doing it here, uh, having me on here so that I can be exposed to your audience. If you come across an agent that you know has it in them to be successful and the thing that's holding them back is either their mindset or not knowing the scripting and not having the scripting internalized to create opportunities, send them my way. I, I have a program called PUSH. It stands for Prospect Until Success Happens. And it's a full mastery program of mastering the listing presentation, the pre-qualification, and learning how to make calls and overcome objections. So typically that's my last question, but I just thought of something. I got, I have to address this and because this is going to help a lot of people. Yes. So I'll give you a scenario. There's an agent, a new agent who's, who's, who's making the calls, who's really persistent. And every time he makes a call, he gets off the call. You have a discussion with him and he thinks about, okay, what did I do wrong? What do I got to change? And then they don't change. They listen and they don't change or they read and they, they research and they don't change. Is there a trigger there or is it just to, to keep having them push? So what I like to do, so when anyone comes into my circle, I find out what their big why and what their motivation is, just like we do with sellers. So like when we are getting offers and the seller doesn't want to accept it, we go to them and say, you got to be in California by October. Like, what are we doing? It's You got to be there. So we got to accept an offer. I'm going to go to that agent and say, listen, you told me your goal was to have college funded for your daughters and you wanted to buy a new house and this is why it was important. Is that still important to you? Well, if it's still important to you every day that you're not putting in your all to have the success you want to have, you're letting yourself down, you're letting your family down and you're letting that legacy that you want to create seep through your fingers. And so if that's important to you, I'm going to ask you to show up and put the work in. If it's not important to you anymore, let me know that, but I'm going to keep pushing you until you get to a point where you're fighting it's hard for you as I'm fighting for you to have the success. Thank you so much for that. I got two quick things and I want to thank you so much for coming on everybody. Next week, we've got the great John Glutch who has teams in San Diego, Las Vegas and Arizona. Uh, a great man that I know from, from, from my neck of the woods, from my collaborative effect of team. But the most important thing for today is you heard, I heard you told mm -hmm. me that mm -hmm. there was, there was a new hat. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and the new hats are actually being picked up today. Yes. So that's going to be sent out to you. I want to thank everybody for watching. Next week, we've got John Glutch from Team Leader at EXP Realty coming on and joining us next week. Uh, great stuff today at David Radney Push. And here's his other information, his email and his site. Make sure that you check that out. David, just stay on for one second. I want okay. to thank everybody else for coming. Have a great, great weekend. God bless everybody. And we'll see you real soon. Let's just see if I can find